Hi and welcome back to this channel. In today's video, we are going to write a small program that uses a while loop to find the Fibonacci number by specifying its position in the Fibonacci sequence. If you know in mathematics, Fibonacci numbers form a sequence of numbers called the Fibonacci sequence. And by definition, the Fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers where each number is the addition of the last two preceding numbers starting with zero and one. So here on the screen is an example of a Fibonacci sequence. As you can see here, we have 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34. So in this sequence, for example, you can notice that 34 is actually the result of the addition between these two preceding numbers, which are 21 and 13. The same way 21 is the result of the addition between 13 and 8. The same thing for 13, which is the result of the addition between 8 and 5 here. 8 is the result of the addition between 5 and 3. So following the same logic, we can complete or add up other numbers to uh, be part of this Fibonacci sequence. So as I said at the beginning in this video, we are going to develop a small program that will allow us to find the Fibonacci number that occupies a specific position in a Fibonacci sequence. So the program must allow the user to input the position of the desired Fibonacci number in the Fibonacci sequence. And uh, that simply means that we will need to get the first two Fibonacci numbers, the position of the desired number in the Fibonacci sequence, then calculate the next Fibonacci number by adding the previous two elements of the Fibonacci sequence. And then we will repeat this uh, last step until the desired Fibonacci number is found. Then finally print out the found Fibonacci number. So here is how the code will look like. First, I will start by declaring an input object like this. So I will say static scanner. I'll call that input object console and I'll say new scanner system that in. Then I'll put semicolon like this. I need to import the scanner class. So I will simply click on import scanner here. So after that, I am now going to declare the various variables that are going to be used in this program. So the first variables are going to be the ones that will store the first two Fibonacci numbers of our Fibonacci sequence. So the first one, I will say number one, and I will set its value to zero. The second one, I will say number two and set its value to one. Next, I will declare another variable that is going to store the desired Fibonacci number that we will be looking for. So I will say Fibonacci number semicolon. I will also need another variable that will store the position of the Fibonacci number we are looking for. And that variable is going to store the value of the desired, uh, the position of the Fibonacci number that the user is going to input. So I will say integer number position. So the position of the Fibonacci number that we are looking for. Then finally, I need to declare my loop control variable. So it's going to be a counter. So I would simply say counter like this. Now let's write the output statements. Uh, the first output statement will tell the user about the first and the second Fibonacci number of the sequence. So I will say system that out that print line like this. And in here, I'm simply going to write a string. I will say first or the first two numbers of the Fibonacci sequence are concatenation, I will say number one, concatenation, and number two, like this. So after that, I'm going to write a second output statement. I will say system that out, that print line, like this. And in here, I'm going to write a string. I will say, please enter the position of the Fibonacci number you are looking for semicolon like this. So now right after that, I need to add an input statement that will allow the user to enter the position of the Fibonacci number that we are looking for. So I have this variable called number position that we declared 
up here and I'm going to use my input object here and then say next int because the user will be prompted to enter an integer value. So now we have reached the main part of our program, which is to determine how the program will find the desired Fibonacci number. Okay, so I will start by writing an if else selection control structure in which the Fibonacci number position entered by the user will be used in the condition. So I will say if the number position, so that's it, uh, the, the number entered by the user, uh, making reference to the position of the desired Fibonacci number that we will be looking for. So I will say if the user enter the number one as the position of the desired Fibonacci number, then we will say that our Fibonacci number is equal to the variable number one. So that's the value zero here, because that's actually the first value of the Fibonacci sequence, according to this small program that we are writing. So if you write one here, that means the number at the first position. So it's normal to say that it's number one because that's the first number we have in our Fibonacci sequence. And I will say else if, I will add another condition here and I will say number position again. I will say equal, equal to, so that means that if the position of the Fibonacci number that you want to see is two, so we will say Fibonacci number is, is equal to the variable number two. So that will be one here, okay? Because this one, number two, is actually the second number in our Fibonacci sequence, according to this program that we are writing down here. So that's it. And then I'm going to now write the else statement, okay? So if these two conditions are not met, then I need my program to initialize the counter to three. So it's going to, the counter is going to start from the number three here. And after that, I need to write my while loop statement. And in the condition of this while loop uh, statement, I'm going to test and compare the variable counter and the variable number position. So I'm simply going to write while the counter counter is less than or equal to the number position, that's it, the position entered by the user. Then in the body of the loop, I'm going to write the various action statements whenever this condition that we are specifying here evaluates to true. So first of all, I'm going to say Fibonacci. So the desired Fibonacci number must be equal to number two plus number one here. Because as we said at the beginning, we talked about the definition like Fibonacci uh, number is actually equal to the result of the two preceding numbers. So in here, these are the two preceding numbers. We're going to calculate that until this condition evaluates to false. So uh, like I said, this is because the Fibonacci number is the addition between the last two preceding numbers of the sequence. And also in order to make sure that the Fibonacci number sequence will continue to evaluate, we need to add uh, other action statements. So we will say number one here will be now equal to number two and number two will now be equal to the value of stored in Fibonacci underscore number and then the counter that is going to be used to control the repetition in the while loop. So this is to make sure that during the repetition, these variables will hold different numbers in order for us to reach the desired Fibonacci number. So that's it concerning uh, the while loop. So now outside of the while loop and of the if statement, I'm going to write an output statement. I will say system that out that print line like this. So this output statement, I'm going to use that to print to print out the desired Fibonacci number. So I'll, I'm going to say like this, the desired, um, like here. I can add some variable. I'm going to say number underscore position like this. I will say um, and uh, in here of the Fibonacci number is concatenation 
and then I will say Fibonacci. So here I'm getting the error because it's an initialized variable. So I need to initialize my variable Fibonacci. So if I come up here, I'm simply gonna say zero like this. Yeah, I think I'm good to go. So I will not get any error here. So now let me run this program. So I think everything is set up correctly. I can now run my program like this. Click on run. Okay, let me expand the console. As you can see, the first two numbers of the Fibonacci sequence are zero, 01. Please enter the position of the Fibonacci number you are looking for. Here, if I write um, one, for example, and press enter, as you can see, the desired, okay, first Fibonacci number is zero okay because we specified it here we said if the user enters the number one which i did the fibonacci number must be equal to number one and we know that number the variable number one is storing a value zero here okay so if i run again and then enter the value two for example you say i'll get one here okay based on what we specified and but then if i say for example i want the position five so you see that i will get three here so if you count here we say one two three four five so that's exactly uh what we are getting so if i say that i want the fibonacci number uh, positioned at uh, the sixth place, for example, I write six here, I'm supposed to get five. Let me say six, then press enter, you know, I'm getting five here. So that's actually how you can develop a small program like this, where you specify the position of the Fibonacci number, and then uh, make sure that the program will output or print out the correct Fibonacci number occupying that position that you entered in the program. So you could also make sure that you will allow the user to enter these first two Fibonacci numbers instead of declaring and initializing them uh, constantly like this. You could may write a program where you would allow the user to enter the two uh, first values and then the following part of the code would still remain the same. So guys, that was it concerning the, how the program, how to write a program that will allow the user to get a Fibonacci number based on a specified position that it could input in the program. So I hope this video was informative and please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Let's meet in the next video.